Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Jimmy and welcome to my new video. So in this tutorial I'll be showing you how you can create a pretty cool alternative to a boring slideshow using Adobe After Effects CS6. Now of course anything I'll be doing in this can be easily translated into CS3, 4, 5 or anything like that, so you won't have any problems following along no matter what version you have. Okay, so let's take a quick look at what I'll be showing you roughly how to do today. Okay, so as you can see, it's just a kind of cool way to present a slideshow or a timeline or anything like that. You've pretty much just got some text, you've got that line moving through 3D space, and it's linking up to a few different photos. Okay, so let's get right into it. We're going to go up to Composition, New Composition. I'm going to make it 1280 by 720 However, depending on what you're making this for, you might want to uh, change that to what is best suited. And I'm just going to call this Slideshow Tutorial. Now 29.97 frames per second and 15 seconds for this tutorial will be plenty for me. So I'm going to click OK. OK, so the first thing that we want to do now is create a nice background. So to do this, we're going to go up to Layer, New Solid, and I'm going to call this one Background. Now you want to make sure that you click Make Comp Size and OK. So now from here, we're going to go over to our Effects and Presets tab and type in Ramp. Now a ramp is, is it's pretty much a gradient. Uh, if you're used to Photoshop or anything else really. Um, so now you can see that our effect pops up on the left hand side here where we can go ahead and edit it. So this is totally up to you. However, what I usually do is change linear to radial and you can see these kind of starting and ending points here with these little circles in the top and bottom. Just get the bottom one and drag it down. You can see that kind of feathers out the gradient a lot and it just makes it a much more gradual kind of transition between the colors. So now what I'm going to do is change our black color to a very uh, almost white color and then change our end color to something a little bit darker and you can see that just creates a very nice neutral background however as I said it's totally up to you you can change the colors of it uh, do whatever you want okay so what we're going to do now is grab our text tool up here and type whatever we want for our starting text so for you it might be happy birthday or it could be anything like that for me I'm just going to type my channel name and you want to make sure that you choose a relatively nice font I'm using Century Gothic, it's one of my favorite fonts at the moment. And then you can go ahead and center it by pressing your inverted comma key or going down here and enabling the title action safe. And you can see these kind of guides here pop up. So now that that's done, that's perfectly centered. Uh, we can get on to importing our images. So going across to our project tab up here, you want to find the photos that you want to import. So for me, I've just selected these four photos that I've taken. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So what we're going to do now is actually create a camera so we can animate everything within 3D space. So we're going to go up to Layer, New Camera, and just click OK. I'm going to use a 24mm preset. We're going to go up to Layer, New Null Object. Now what we want to do with the Null Object is make it a 3D layer by clicking this empty box here under the 3D cube. Now if you don't see these options, just click the Toggle Switches modes down here, or press F4 on your keyboard, and that should pop up. So now that that's a 3D layer, select your camera layer, grab your parent tool, which is the little spiral, click and drag it up to your null object. So what that's just done is it's parented our camera to our 3D null object. So whatever we do to our null object will affect the camera. And it's just an easy way to navigate it that way. So now that we've done that, we want to go ahead and make our main text layer a 3D layer. And now we can start adding in the pictures and animating our camera. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is start creating that line that you see, which animates in between the text and photos. So to do this, I'm going to create a new layer, so layer, new solid, and we're going to make this white. However, as I keep saying, you can make it any color you want. And I'm just going to call this line, and click OK. Now, I'm not sure if this is the actual best way to do this, it's just the way that I used, so if you know a better way, um, feel free to do it that way. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is pretty much just stretch this layer out really, really far. And you can see if we zoom out, it's just really long. Now you can also just squash it in if you just want to do it that way, which I guess is okay for this tutorial. And we'll just drag this in and get the thickness you want. Um, my recommendation is have it about the same thickness as your text, so that seems pretty good for me. And then we can go ahead and drag this one down. And now that we've done that, we want to make that a 3D layer as well. 
and we'll just move this across a little bit so that the start is pretty much in line with where you want your line to start animating in which for me is about there so what we can do now is animate our camera so to do this we will just grab our null object layer press the p key to bring up our position properties and we'll move forward to about three seconds in now we want to click the stopwatch here on position move forward to about four seconds and move across now i'm assuming you have some basic knowledge of keyframing if not you want to make sure that you watch a keyframing tutorial before you do this otherwise you might get a little bit lost so now with those we want to highlight both the keyframes right click keyframe assistant and easy ease however you can just press f9 but that will stop my uh, screen recording and i don't want that so now with that done you can see the camera just moves across and it's moving with the line as well so now what we want to do is duplicate our text layer which is probably the fastest way and we'll just drag that across to the right as well until it gets to where the camera is stopped and then we can just position it anywhere we want so for me I'll just move it below the line here and then we can grab our text tool and alter that to whatever we want our second text to be so that's pretty good right there and then we can go ahead and import our first picture so for me I'll just import this uh, sunrise sunset shot sorry and we can put that wherever we want so for me um, up here would be fine and that's pretty good right there we might actually put it right on the line and line it up with our text too so it uh, looks all nice and clean okay so from there what we need to do is actually make our picture a 3d layer so it moves with the camera and it doesn't just stay in the one spot like it is right now so to do that we want to make it a 3d layer and if we zoom out you can see it's right back at the start we can just click and drag it all the way back and that's pretty good right there okay so what we want to do now is actually animate our line so it's not just there the whole time we want to actually see it transitioning between this text and this picture so for that what we're going to do is actually use masking okay so we want to go back to the first keyframe here just before the camera starts moving and we want to grab our rectangle tool now with our line selected we want to pretty much click and uh, just start the mask here so you can see nothing is shown now the mask is totally missing the line and that's pretty much what we want so now with that done we want to grab our line layer double tap the m key to bring up all of our mask properties like you can see here and then add a stopwatch to mask path now what mask path is it's pretty much keyframing the position or the shape of the mask now we can go ahead and move forward to where the second keyframe is zoom out and you can see our mask is here now if we press Control t on our keyboard we can see the transform box comes up to click the right hand side and drag it across to where we want the mask to stop which in my case is right at the edge here so now that that's done just press the enter key on your keyboard and if we have a look at that now you can see the line transitions between the two uh, fairly nicely so now you might want to also uh, select these two keyframes and change those to easy ease like we did before and then we want to add a bit of motion blur just to make it look a little bit better so we want to turn it on for the composition here which is just this switch up here and then again we want to enable it for our uh, picture layer our line layer and both our text layers now you can see as we move now it's got a bit of motion blur and it just helps it look a little bit better so now from there what we're going to do is just show how to get another picture to stack on top of it like i did my example so we're going to import my second picture that i'm using which is this one here so now what we want to do is pretty much just use the exact same properties from our other picture so it's in the exact same place so the only changes that we applied to that other one were position and scale so pressing the p key on our keyboard will bring up the position properties of our first picture layer then hold shift and press s so that's position and scale now if you click both of these and hold control so you can select position and scale go up to edit copy select your second picture and go up to edit paste you can see you can't really see it at the moment but as soon as you change it to a 3d layer you can see it is in the exact same position now we also want to enable motion blurring for that however we're just going to turn it off for the composition at the moment just to make everything run a bit smoother okay so now what we want to do is pretty much make that animate into that spot so let's grab our position and rotation keyframe so by pressing p on your keyboard holding shift and pressing r will bring up position and rotation okay so from there we just pretty much want to animate it out we don't want to animate it in because we've already got it in the exact same position 
So the first thing you need to do is figure out how long until you want it to actually be in that space. So you can see the camera stops at about four seconds in. Let's say we want that first picture to be shown for two seconds. And then this one to animate in in about half a second. So we'll move forward to six and a half seconds. Press P and choose whichever um, rotation options that you want. I'll probably choose X and Z. And then we just want to move back to the six second mark and animate this one out. So we'll bring up our rotation and alter this like so. And then we can just go ahead and drag this out in whichever way uh, we want. So now if we highlight all six of these keyframes, right click keyframe assistant easy ease, you can see it animates in kind of flying in from the top corner. So now if we enable motion blur, you can see it actually looks pretty cool and it just flips right into where the other picture is. Okay, so another thing just to make sure is that layer is there the whole time. So if your camera starts at a different place, there is a chance that you could see this one in your frame. So to fix that, you might just want to go forward one frame before the uh, keyframe to animate it in and just click and start the actual whole layer there. So that way you're not going to have to worry about it getting in the way of anything else. Okay guys, so that is pretty much it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Um, be sure to try out a few new effects, uh, get a bit more creative with it. Obviously I just showed you the bare basics to get you started, however everything is a repeated process no matter what direction you put the line in, whether it's towards the camera, away from the camera, up or down, it's all the exact same process repeated. Um, so I hope this helped you, if it did be sure to hit that like button to help my channel out. You can subscribe for future tutorials, otherwise you can check out my last video which I created free banners which you see at the start of all of my tutorials, so if you're interested in that you can check that out uh, by clicking on the screen now. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye.